We've referred to $111 about or there, thereabouts twice already in this interview as well. Mm. What is that doing, though, in terms of the speed of that transition? There's a lot of people, and, and I have a lot of sympathy for the view, who say this is going to turbocharge the drive to net zero because it's making the alternatives way more competitive. We had a very interesting February, of course, and I, I, I won't expound why. We know what's happened uh, mm -hmm. on the geopolitical scene here. Originally, the themes of many uh, industry players as we embarked on 2022, a recovery from the pandemic, was that we need to push through with energy transition. But what has happened with so much gas being removed from the system, uh, not being available to Europe, so much barrels now making its way through different routes, the, the challenge of ensuring energy security has now taken its position again, front and center. And of course, the perennial trilemma of affordability and access to reliable energy now rears its ugly head again. Yeah. But in the long run, and I reiterate this, Economics 101 will tell you there will be a push to substitution. Yeah. And more and more renewables and hydrogen will be, a viable, uh, will be a viable alternative. Not to say oil and gas is gone tomorrow. It's still going to be part of the energy mix. We just have to deliver every barrel in a different way. But is it going to be too much of the energy mix? I was speaking to Dr. Birol from the IEA earlier mm. on as well, and he, he's pretty unambiguous about this. We need to not invest in new hydrocarbon projects. That money needs to go into renewables as well. Yeah. I guess you take a more nuanced stance on that. It has to be. In the countries that we operate, I think there is also a clamor and a call to return to the economic activities. It's, it's not a, an easy shift for them. But I do agree with uh, Dr. Fatih in the long run. The investments need to be a lot more robust. If you were, I think in, in one of his prior forums, he had, had already advocated, if you're going to invest in LNG, it needs to be a system robust to cope to an evolution to perhaps green hydrogen. So you're not making this investment per se only uh, for the production of uh, LNG, but also being able to pivot later on. Technology, the chemistry, the physics... One thing that the industry has been known for is innovation. Yeah. I believe it's the, again, I've been quoted on this before, it is the golden age for engineering to step up and respond. This is truly the world's probably, the world's probably greatest existential challenge.